connecting more to Christ and loving Kitsap and the world, a simple and profound mission, but now an especially complex and challenging time. COVID-19 has dramatically affected all our lives and certainly SLC's ministry. Then there is the volatility of societal issues and challenges, all of which makes our mission more urgent than ever. Moreover, the transition of Pastor Paula and our small group connector and intern Marietta are real losses for us. So let's talk about where we've been and where we are headed. As our president, David Soini, has said, we went from being an in-person, on-site church to a digital church overnight. We've had to adjust, adapt, and innovate. Yet, we have remained dedicated to delivering the goods, the forgiveness and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in word and sacrament, and have done so now using digital media, producing a high quality worship video has been a big task. And our music director, Justin, our Zoom choir and John Ackenhausen have produced um, an incredible worship service, as well as our pastors. And we've all stepped up big time to make it happen. As pastors, we have moved all our classes, Bible studies, meetings, programming, and administrative meetings to Zoom. or been creative with in-person, physically distanced gatherings. Our audio devotionals have become cherished parts of your week for which we are very thankful. Moreover, a wonderful development this year, thanks to Darcy Lund, has been our joy brigade that has stepped up our lay and pastoral support of more isolated households in our congregation. Our quilters and hearty meals have continued on in a physically distanced fashion. Then there is the financial support and response that you have made in this time of crisis. Because of your faithful support of SLC, we are in a good place and ready to adapt to the new realities ahead as we prayerfully emerge from this pandemic in the next year. Ultimately, when we think about 2020, it is a testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit keeping us engaged in connecting more to Christ and loving Kitsap and the world. You've done a good job, SLC. So where are we headed? Well, first, let me address the staffing plans our council PJ and I have made for the coming year. Our first decision was related to whether or not we call another pastor. We've heard from many of you how much you've appreciated Pastor Paula's ministry. I mean, there's really no replacing someone of her caliber. But we've also heard how much you appreciate having a female clergy person on staff. We completely agree. However, because of COVID-19 and the uncertainties of the future, we have decided this is not the right time to start the process of calling a third pastor, but rather add a number of part-time positions to address the areas of need. One of those areas is visitation and pastoral care. And we are blessed to have a very gifted layperson in Kim Holmes Grasmick, who has a certification in Lutheran studies and is enrolled in our Synod's Psalm program, which is a ministry certification program. And we're gonna bring her on board at 15 hours a week or so as our pastoral care assistant. She will work with myself and our care ministry. Kim will also support, um, be the support person for our women's ministry, specifically our ladies' night out events and our women's retreats. Now the other area of need and importance is our outreach to families with children and military families. We've experienced a downturn in numbers of children in our congregation, and we are excited to bring Jessica Voigt on, a Navy mother herself, as well as someone who has a long and wonderful history at SLC, as our children's ministry and military families connector. Jessica's energy, passion for outreach, creativity, and love for the Lord will be a great asset in attracting and blessing families with children here at SLC. Well, what else? Well, I still believe strongly in our Break the Barrier positions created 
a number of years back, if you remember. And we will continue with those. They are not new additions, but I want to highlight them at this point and remind you of Kathy Bowman, our current community connector, a retired ELCA clergy person of our congregation, who will continue in a voluntary capacity and now will focus more specifically on our work with the Cottage Bay Apartments and Esquire Hills Elementary School. Moreover, I still believe in the need for paid staff to support our small group ministries. And I am excited to announce that Chris Love, a longtime participant in SLC's small group ministry, will come on board at the first of the year as our small group connector. This was the position previously held by intern Marietta. We will continue to support this position also from our Break the Barrier Fund. Now, before I go on to some other developments, I need to stop and address the effects of this pandemic on our congregation and all congregations. Changes that may not go away after COVID is over. Now, the Barna Research Group has done extensive research that indicates there seems to be a warming up to digital and hybrid ministry. Hybrid being a combination of physical in-person and digital ministry. One in five church adults has what Barna calls high digital openness. Looking ahead, millennial churchgoers say hybrid church, just as much as physical church, will be a good fit for them. Therefore, the challenge comes. How much of the congregation's resources can be put into providing digital content in the future? Making a full worship video each week is difficult, but we have done this primarily through our current staff, Justin and pastors, pivoting and incorporating the filming and production of this video to our weekly ministry. And let me just stop here to tip my hat to our whole staff, and especially to Justin, our music director, and how they have adjusted in this year. We've received so much gratitude from you on our work um, in this past year, and we are thankful for that. And I want to say to all our staff, awesome job. Now, going forward, we don't see producing a worship video as sustainable now that we have started up in-person worship and some other in-person programming. However, we know that there will be, continue to be a need not only for our worship service to be available digitally, but also um, for other aspects of our ministry. For this reason, the council and trustees have contracted with two professionals to support a live stream experience of our Sunday worship, a worship media producer and a sound technician. Sound has to be mixed differently for the in-house service and for the live stream, requiring one person for that job and then another person to be running the cameras, inserting media, and producing the live stream. The trustees also are making a significant investment in equipment to do this. Cameras, computer, switcher as they call it, and projectors for the sanctuary to help do this ministry well. And we know going into the future, we will need to provide a high quality digital worship for those who cannot be with us in person. Our paid staff now, in addition, in particular Kathleen, our communications connector, and Bruce, our business manager, are also pivoting to work into the digital world. Kathleen and Bruce, are working extensively with our new SLC Church app, we're so excited about this, that will eventually be the one-stop shop for all our digital communication and content. Oh, but don't worry, for those who don't use smartphones, our content will still be available the way it has been now. We now get to do ministry, we get to do ministry in two different word, worlds, digital and in person. By the way, some larger congregations are allocating 50% of their financial resources uh, to the digital side of ministry. Hybrid digital ministry is certainly going to be part of our future. As we also continue to prioritize ministry to and with our youth, 
we are planning to add some part-time support for our youth ministry. Given we have one less pastor now, in addition to my preaching, worship leadership, and focus on youth and family ministry, I will be working with Pastor Bill more in the area of pastoral care. To support this, we are hoping to add a part-time layperson who will both work directly with our youth and will also provide administrative support. Now you may be thinking a number of things at this point, like, wow, this seems like a lot of moving pieces. Yes, there are always pluses and minuses to decisions like this, but we have set up a good system of oversight and getting more lay leadership involved in our ministry, we feel is a very good thing. Now, if you want to see an organizational chart, we'll have that available online and on our website. You also might be wondering, what's the difference between a volunteer ministry position and our part-time paid positions? Well, part of the difference is we are expecting more time than is perhaps typical for a volunteer position, but there's also more accountability for a paid position as well. Yet ultimately, when we have someone who wishes to do some of these ministries in a volunteer capacity, we of course welcome and celebrate that. I mean, a great example is our bookkeeper position, currently wonderfully done by Rick Cotter. Most churches our size would need to pay someone for the amount of time and expertise that that job takes. I mean, then there's our community connector that Kathy does that you already heard about. And another example was our parish nurse position that Lisa Ottenbacher did for many years. What about a parish nurse position, you might be asking? Well, up to now, we haven't found someone with the health credentials um, needed that's interested in that position, but we are certainly open to that. I also know that some are wondering if we could have another intern at some point. Well, supervising an intern is both a significant time commitment on my part, as well as a significant time and financial commitment on SLC's part. And I would love to, in the future for us to re-engage with this ministry, but I think I want to get a little further down the road and get through this pandemic before we consider that. Finally, I bet you're wondering how much will all this cost? <laughs> all of these positions will be less than the compensation we had previously allocated for Pastor Paula's position. And as you've seen perhaps already, our budget for next year is basically the same as it was for 2020. I'll let you check that out in the proposed budget that is out now for your examination. I'll sh I am sure there are more questions though, and I hope if you have more questions, you will feel free to email us or attend our upcoming informational Zoom meeting or call in time to talk to one of our executive officers. Well, as we close, we want to say what a great job your leadership, our church council and executive officers have done this past year. They have been so supportive and so of us as pastors and as the, of the whole staff. They've asked hard and important questions and shown great resiliency during this pandemic. And I'm delighted that David Soini as president, Denise Hemmersbach as VP, and Mark Bargy as treasurer are all open to serving another term and are nominated for those positions. Special thanks to Becky Bauer for her service as our secretary this year. And please do check out our list of nominees for the election at our annual meeting. We are so thankful for all who have served and for those who will serve. Finally, we want to thank our families for their amazing support in our ministry. We are so blessed by them and so blessed to get to be pastors at this amazing church, SLC. We've looked back and we are looking forward. And as challenging as the future promises to be, we are excited to continue in ministry with you. One thing we can definitely say for sure, our Lord has us in his hands and will bring to completion what he has begun in us. So we do look forward to yet another year of connecting more to Christ and loving Kitsap and the world. <laughs>